Well, good evening to everyone who's in the house and also for those that are tuning in online. We just want to remind you that we love you and we gather here each week to pray for the needs of yours. Whatever where you are from, you are not insignificant before the Lord. God knows your needs even before we pray. We open our mouth before Him. He already knows everything. And we just come in agreement with you to ask the Lord to heal us, forgive us, renew us and to lead our lives. Amen. Father, we thank you for this evening and we thank you for who you are. We thank you that we can come tonight boldly into your presence as your word invites us to. Lord, we thank you that we can have confidence that you hear our prayers. Lord, we have faith in our hearts, not as those that do not know who they serve. But we know that you are the only true God, the living God who hears us and not only hears us, but answers our prayers. We thank you for all the praise reports we have been getting. We thank you Father that you love us and you care for us and we pray that you would continue to be glorified in and through our lives. Do it one more time tonight. Be glorified tonight in this service, in our lives, in our families, in our communities, in this nation and around the world because you deserve all the honor and praise. We love you and we say thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Let's put our hands together and give God a shout of praise and worship Him because He's worthy.
There's so many people that need the strength of the Lord tonight. There's so many from the body of Jesus Christ that seek strength from the Holy Spirit to finish this race and to finish the journey that God has called us to do. Jessica is writing, please pray. God will give me boldness, power, love and endurance in the last days. We're going to be praying for you Jessica tonight. Another prayer request came from Brian, which is in Tennessee. I would like prayer that I would finish the race that the Lord has set before me. That I would keep my eyes on Jesus. Pray for my son in his 60s. He's homeless and has grandkids. Pray for a church to reach out and disciple him that has the power of God. We're going to be praying for your son. Peg is writing from United States. Pray for the Lord to draw near. I deeply want to see the power of Jesus. I was raised Catholic. Liz from Alabama is writing. I was so blessed by the message of Pastor Teresa on Sunday. Please pray for me. I'm 71 years old. I have three grown children and not even one of them is in my life. Let's stop and pray for this prayer request. Father, we pray. We pray for Liz. We pray, oh God, that this mother, grandmother potentially, you know who she is. You know where she's from. You know when you hear the cry of her heart and the pain that she's sharing. Lord, we want to say thank you that the message that Pastor Teresa shared on Sunday, Lord, touched her life and brought hope for this reason she's writing in today. And she's asking for a miracle in her life. She's asking for her children to come back home. She's asking for her children to be part of her life. God Almighty, I pray that the hope that she has in you will not fade. I pray for her children, oh God, that you would get a hold of them by the power of the Holy Spirit. You love them and your kindness and mercy is upon them. Oh God Almighty, we cry out for these children. We cry out for the prodigals. We cry out for those that the enemy has come and stolen. God, everything that belongs to you will be in your hands, oh Father. And we cry out to you tonight that you would return the hearts of the children towards their mother. I pray that healing and restoration will be in this family. We pray for Liz that her faith will not grow weary. In the name of Jesus we pray, oh God. Another one from United States it says, I need to experience the truth of Psalms 27 10. To know God is my involved and present father. And another one from Canada. Please pray that God will fill me with His Holy Spirit. I have grieved the Holy Spirit of God and I feel like He has departed from me. I truly repent. Whoever where you are and whoever you are, you did not write your name. But let me tell you, the Holy Spirit did not depart from you because if you would have departed from you, you would not be even writing this prayer request. But it is the cry of the Holy Spirit in your heart and in your life right now that is making you write this prayer request. It is His work in your life. And I want to just ensure you that as you love the Lord and is walking with the Lord, never allow the enemy to lie to you that the Holy Spirit has left you. Oh God Almighty, we pray for this prayer request specifically for this person in Canada right now that feels so empty. That she feels, oh Father, like she has grieved you. God, but you still love her. And we pray, oh God, that the lies of the enemy will not have power in her mind and in her life. In the name of Jesus. The fact that she's writing the prayer request, it is a testament to your spirit that works in and through her life. It's because she desires to cry out to you. She desires to get closer to you. And God Almighty, we pray that you will reveal your love to her, oh Father. That you will reveal your covenant to her. I pray, oh God, that your word will be opened up to her, oh Father. I pray that healing and restoration will be in her life. And I pray, oh Jesus, that you will hear her cry. Lord, we pray for all the prayer requests that have come in tonight and throughout the week. You know them all, oh God. Before a word comes 
out of our mouth before a word even comes into our mind you already know everything because you have created us oh Lord and we pray that you will show mercy to those that seek for mercy forgiveness to those that cry out for forgiveness oh God healing for those that are sick God I pray restoration spiritual strength for those that feel empty and they cannot go on so many prayer requests that they don't have the strength to go on but we need you oh God we need your power of the Holy Spirit and we ask you to fill us tonight again to fill every person that feels weak oh God every person that feels far away bring them close to you oh Lord because it is your power it is the work of the Holy Spirit in our life and without you we are empty we are alone we are left to die oh God but with you we have everlasting life and for that reason we want to say thank you Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love in our lives. Thank you that you chase us, oh God, in your mercy and in your kindness, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to come bold into your presence. And I pray, oh Jesus, that we will be encouraged tonight, that we will be reminded tonight that you love us and that you care for us and that you are for us, not against us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Strengthen the church strengthen our brothers and sisters strengthen us our father and give us the grace that we need to face tonight and to face tomorrow by the power of the holy spirit in jesus mighty name we pray amen mountain can be they say these chains will never break but they don't know you like we do there is power in your name we've heard that there is no way Time will never change. They haven't seen. 
prayer family and we're here to pray with you tonight we just thank God that we're at a prayer meeting because we are here to believe that God does miracles we believe for it because he is that good pastor Carter and I were in Italy and we had the privilege of ministering to teen challenge workers from all over Europe what a time that was and there are people that are standing in the grace and power of God and they are seeing miracles all across Europe and we know he's going to do it again tonight because our God Jesus Christ he alone can deliver us from the darkness of this age he alone can save us from our sins and he alone is worthy of praise tonight. We're here to believe him for it. We're here to believe him for miracles tonight. He is so faithful and he loves us tonight. You know, I want to pray tonight for people in mental anguish. And we have someone who wrote in from Australia and they said, I feel like I have no family or friends. I feel insane, like the police are after me. I started and stopped drugs all at the same time. I feel like I'm in a war. I can't open my Bible. And someone else from Cork, Ireland, need help, can't go back, feel cut off from the vine, losing everything. First of all, I wanna to say to both these people who have written in, it's, it's amazing you have written in that you are watching this prayer meeting and I pray you are watching tonight because we wanna join our prayers with your, yours. I'm reminded when Jesus visited the coast and there was a man who was bound with chains, crying and weeping and cutting himself, and Jesus went to him. He alone can break the chains of that kind of darkness. He alone has the power to understand why deep in our spirit there can be such darkness. But he is the light of the world and he can pierce any darkness. And Lord, we just lift up those, oh God, that are suffering from mental anguish tonight. Lord, they are so bound. All they do is they live in a place of death. They live in a place where there is no hope. But Jesus, we ask by your spirit, would you visit these people? People. Would you visit our friend in Australia, oh God? Would you, where he feels like he's insane, oh God? Would you just bring soundness of mind with your love and your salvation, oh God? Would you go so deep that he could be a miracle testimony in his community? Would you raise him up to have such a powerful testimony till the day he goes to heaven, oh God? He can bring glory to Jesus alone, breaks the chains and brings salvation that washes us from our sins. In, oh God, only you can bring life and light to dark spirits, oh God. So would you visit him tonight, oh God. And for that person in Cork, Ireland, oh God, that feels so cut off and so alone and is losing hope, I pray tonight you would touch his mental anguish. Lord, I pray you would visit him in his darkness. I pray, oh God, one more time like you have done all over this globe, how you have put dead people living on their feet, where you have taken people out of the tombs and you have given them life do it again Lord Jesus for your glory for you are well able and you want to so I thank you and I pray for those that are believing that they, if they live with people in mental anguish if they are the caregiver if they are their person beside them oh God would you visit them with hope tonight would you visit them with your peace and your love oh God thank you sometimes only prayer only beseeching you oh God can intervene and bring life so we believe for it tonight do it again Lord Jesus we thank you we declare you are good we declare you here and you answer prayer and tonight there is freedom for people tonight and freedom Lord for those that are caring for those in mental anguish oh God have your way Lord Jesus and we will be changed we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus name amen and amen you may be seated tonight praise God well, you're in for a treat tonight because we're going to be hearing from a Dutch-Irish alumni from Summit, Thomas Flack, and he had, woo, yes, and <laughs> we love Thomas here, and he has a powerful testimony, and he's going to be sharing how faithful Jesus was to him in every moment, every corner of his life, when the ups and the downs, Jesus has been faithful to him, and he's going to come and share that tonight. Would you give a warm summit welcome to Thomas Flack? Good evening, TSC and the Worldwide Prayer Meeting and everyone online. Um, before I share my testimony, I just want to pray real quick and give this time unto the Lord. 
thank you, Lord Jesus, that on every person's life, Lord, you've written a story that you that you've written from the beginning of the world, from before the foundations of the world. And Lord, as I share my story that you've given me, that you've written on the pages of my life, Lord, I pray that you would anoint these words and that you would reach those who need it most. Lord, those who are in the darkest places of their life, Lord God, that your gospel will shine through my life, Lord Jesus. Um, and we just worship you and we praise you and I give this up to you, Lord. Um, <clears throat> So before I share my testimony, I want to share a Bible verse that I think kind of sums up uh, the journey that I've been on. It comes from Joshua 1.5, and it's when the servant of the Lord is speaking to Joshua before he goes into the promised land. And he says, just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Um, and just as uh, Dr. Conlon said, I grew up in Ireland. I'm Dutch born. My dad was a missionary in Brazil and I'm a missionary's kid. My parents have been serving in the ministry for over 20 years. My grandparents have been serving in the ministry for over 60 years. And if you follow my mother's line uh, down, we're actually descendants from the same family tree as Corrie ten Boom. And just as the Lord was with my family, I know that uh, this story kind of rings true in my own life. But Throughout my childhood, I didn't know. I didn't know that the Lord was with me. And, um, and I'll start there. Um, I was like any other church kid. I believed in all the stories. I went to church. I read my Bible, the little storybook Bible of David and Goliath and uh, Jesus healing the leper. And I believed in those stories and I believed in God. Um, and I put my trust in God at a very young age. I don't remember when I said a sinner's prayer or if I knelt by my bed. I just know I believed and trusted in the Lord. But that's when things started happening in my life that um, I wasn't ready for. Um, when I started going to school at the age of four and five, um, the first day a kid came up to me and he said, I hate you. And I was kind of shook. Like I went to church all my life and nobody <laughs> says I hate you. And so I was blown away, but from that very first day I went to school, all throughout elementary school, middle school, high school, I was a victim of extreme bullying to the point where I was often in the nurse's office where I'd have bloody noses, cuts on my elbows and my knees, I'd have bruises all over my body, and I'd often go home weeping and crying, just wondering why this was happening. I would always ask God, why is this happening? I, I thought you were a good God. I thought you were... Uh, the God that, you know, fights for me and like, just like David and Goliath. And with this bullying, obviously comes a lot of mental strain and torment. Um, I had extreme anxiety through the roof. Uh, and I was only five or six, all throughout my young child years. I wasn't even in my teens yet. I, was, I would get so nervous and sick before going to school that I couldn't, I, I had, I would, my body would just create symptoms of throwing up and having a fever, and I actually couldn't go to school. I was so nervous. Um, and another side effect of that was the extreme depression. At the age of seven and eight, I would lie in my bed awake at night and just ask God, why did you create me? Um, and I would create scenarios in my head. If I were to die right now, who would care? Who would love me? Um, and this kept on going all throughout middle school and high school. And in middle school, it wasn't so much physical, it was more emotional. I tried fitting in, tried all the things the kids were doing. I ended up falling into an addiction to pornography and I tried drinking and smoking and just hanging out with everybody that wasn't of God. Um, but throughout my life, there was high points that God kept meeting me at. Um, and it was strange. It was almost like I would be waiting for these moments. Uh, as a missionary's kid, we go to conferences a lot. I would go to youth conferences since the age I was six, the young adults conferences. And I remember I would feel the presence of God. I would feel the Holy Spirit. Even Pastor Carter, Dr. Collin, they know the Summer Fire Conference. I, that was the highlight of every year of my life. That was the highlight, just being in the presence of God. Other believers, other Christians that didn't, pick on me that didn't see my flaws that just loved me as I am and I wanted that I craved that so much and the Lord would meet me even to the point where I remember when I was seven years old I was baptized in the gift of 
and the gift of tongues and the Holy Spirit. And it was actually one of the faculty members, uh, Pastor, Pastor Ryan, who actually prayed for me. Um, and I remember that. And it was a long story. We came a long circle and we met and uh, God let our paths together. But throughout these high moments, I kept on falling. It was like every great high had a great low right afterwards. And I would escape reality at these conferences or with my family when my cousins came over and then I would fall straight down to the bottom again. I was beat up. I was, I was just going through the motions and I didn't know how to deal with these highs and lows with God. But I had no control over the situation, uh, over the situations in my life. Um, there was one point uh, where God really took a hold of me for good. Um, I was in my first year of college, and I, was li- I wasn't living at home, and I received news uh, towards the end of the year, around November, December, that my mother was in hospital. She had suffered a mini stroke. She already had uh, high blood pressure, but uh, there were situations that happened that she suffered a mini stroke, and not soon after, my father was in hospital too, because he had a hyperactive thyroid, and he, he was so weak to the point he wouldn't be able to get out of bed for more than three minutes a day. And so, again, I wasn't in control of this situation, but this time it was different. The Lord had put a burden on my heart to pray every single day for my parents. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I would just pray. Uh, I would wake up 7 in the morning, take 30 minutes to walk to the bus, and those 30 minutes I would just pray and pray and pray and pray. And it was through that praying that the Lord started revealing himself more and more to me. I, the Word became fresh to me. The Bible became fresh to me, and I felt like I was coming into the right direction. And hindsight is twenty twenty. When we look back, everything is clear. I, uh, I had no control over the dark times in my life, but I realize now that even though I was persecuted, struck, and I felt abandoned, the Lord did not forsake me. Those moments in my life where he would meet me, kept me going through the this season that I would go through next. And then I came to Summit and I discovered a wonderful church. I discovered uh, classmates that loved me for who I was. I wasn't alone. And just like my family, the Lord did not forsake my family. The Lord didn't forsake me. And there's those I know that can relate to a similar story to me that are watching online or throughout the world, the people that are in mental anguish that you feel like it's so dark, you would just end it all. That there's so much death inside of you, tormenting you and plaguing you. But I'm here to say at the other side that the Lord has not forsaken you. He sees you in your darkness and he's been in that darkness. He's been lower than the low. There's a, a, a quote that I want to steal from Pastor Yuka in Finland. He says, remember the heights and the lows of God. How high God was before the foundations of the world, but how low did he go just to see you, to make sure he he could relate to you, to get you out of your situation. And I'm going to pray, and uh, and I pray that you would just reach out to the Lord, that you would seek him, and you would feel his presence. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, that you are so good, and you are so faithful. That even as David said in the Psalms, he was young and now he was old, and yet he's never seen the righteous forsaken. And Lord, how true, how true does that is that saying? Lord, time tells how true your truths are. And Lord, I pray for those who are, are seeking for a way out, who are on the verge of suicide, who are on the verge of death, Lord God, and they, they have nowhere to turn. Lord, you are the miraculous God that we read about in the scriptures, Lord God. You are there time and time again. You've never failed. Lord, you always say that you are there and you have always been there. And we've just, sometimes it's so hard to see it, but you are there. Holy Spirit, I pray that you invade the rooms of people right now. That you invade the thoughts of people right now. That you would break open the hearts that are so hard to hear in the gospel. That the, the noise just seems too loud. That they can't pick up their Bibles anymore. I pray, Holy Spirit, by the power of your word and by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would break into their rooms. Break into their bedrooms, their living rooms, their kitchens, their, their cars, on the park bench, Lord. That, that people 
people are passing by and they're listening to this, Lord God. I pray that in your name, Jesus, that you would break through and save these people, Lord God. And that soon, Lord God, and soon and very soon, we would hear the testimonies of how you saw them and you picked them out of their darkness, Lord God. You picked them out of their, their, their hell pit, Lord God, and you raised them up on wings like eagles and that you set their feet upon a rock and that they can now declare, Lord God, that you have never forsaken them, that you were there every step of the way, Lord. Lord, we worship you and we give it all to you, Lord God. In Jesus' name. you just continue to pray? Lord Jesus, Lord, your name means God is salvation, Lord. You've come to seek and save the lost, Lord. Lord, your name is healing. Your name is life, Lord. Lord we just pray, Father, I know that you are able even now, Lord. Continue to work, Lord. Father, I just pray those hearts that are in need, God, that you would just reach them, that you would just touch them. God, I just pray testimonies like Thomas um, would come out of these, these prayers, God, I just pray that we would hear back, Lord, news of your goodness, Lord, and your work in people's lives, Lord. That your name, that the name of Jesus, Lord, anxiety would bow, Lord, depression would bow, Lord, and there would be true healing, Lord, healing deep in our hearts of, of these wounds, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray these things. In Jesus' name.
praise to the name of Jesus tonight because he's good and his mercy endures forever. Father, we thank you that tonight we can confess that the name of Jesus, the name that you exalted and set higher than every other name still has power today. We've spoken that name week after week, God. We've gathered in this house and we've gathered online and we've spoken and proclaimed the name of Jesus over countless situations and we've seen you move We've seen you stretch out your hand and heal bodies, hearts, families. We've seen you provide miraculously for people in need. And God, we look forward to seeing you do even more. Jesus, we celebrate the continued power of your name that you still exercise through us, oh God. Thank you, Lord, that nothing's changed. Nothing's changed between today and the stories we read about in the Bible, oh God. You're still the same miracle working God, stronger than darkness, stronger than the demonic, stronger than sin, stronger than compromise, stronger than a hostile world. You're more powerful than all of it. And we're gonna keep speaking that name until you come again, oh God. Jesus, until you come back for us, we're gonna be found fighting, oh Lord. We're gonna be found confessing that name no matter what it costs us, no matter what it means for the world around us, oh God. We're gonna speak that name into the darkness and we're gonna believe that light will come because that's what happens. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow of things in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus, we confess you tonight and we pray that we would see more and more people do the same as the hour for your return draws near. And we pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Church, listen to some of these testimonies that have been coming in from Canada. When my mom nearly died in the hospital, you all prayed for a miracle and she came home on a feeding tube. Now she's eating solid food. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Another one from Canada. Thanking Jesus for reconciliation with a family member from prayer request long ago. God is so faithful to answer. Pray for their salvation and healing. From Savannah, Georgia. Prayed for a child custody case to work in the child's and our favor. Praise and glory to God. He made a way. Thank you all for standing with and for us. Michael in East Northport, New York writes, My MRI showed no cancer and no evil report from the enemy. Thank you, TSC, for your prayers. Thank you again, Lord. Amen. From Joshua in Flushing, New York, my friend Esther had eye surgery last week and her eye pressure went down to single digits for the first time since she got glaucoma about a decade ago. God is so good and he is so faithful and there's no need too small, no need too big in his eyes. Nothing's too impossible and nothing is too menial. Aren't you so glad for that? Well, praise be to God. You can be seated here in the house tonight. Those of you online, thank you again for joining us. Let's take some time to celebrate what God is doing through this ministry all around the world. 
I've been learning about how God is my savior and how he's great and how he's amazing. I love God and I decided to get baptized. I've been trying to get dunked in that water somehow. I don't care if I have to do it in a bathtub, a toilet, I don't care. My ex-husband left me because I confessed Christ. But I love God most. I love Jesus most because if it wasn't for him, I, I would have taken my life. I would have. just wanted to be baptized because God is amazing and he's opened up so many doors for me. I was in a same-sex relationship and physical abuse was occurring. I wasn't supposed to be here anymore. Thanks to the church, I said, you know what, let's do it. Like, let's go all the way in. It's like putting your flesh to death and being more to God. It felt like there was a lot of weight just coming off of my chest. I found Times Square Church, and there's something in this church. It's Jesus is here. You know, I felt it. We want to live our life for him and to be used by God, whatever he wants to call us to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Times Square Church, it is so exciting. Today, we are baptizing people from Michigan to Australia, Canada, and around the country. And it has been amazing. Thank you for your generosity. For those that are getting water baptized, we sent shirts out and gave shirts away. We've got them flip-flops and towels. You made all that happen. We couldn't have done it without your generosity. So thank you for your tithes and offerings. Today we are getting ready for round two of water baptism, and it is so exciting. I do wanna say, if you've never been water baptized, you need to get ready for the next round. We want you to follow Jesus by being water baptized. But thank you once again, Times Square Church, for all that you've done for us. God bless you. Everything that we're able to do to help people here in New York City and around the world is made possible because of your generosity. All of you are so generous towards the church and the kingdom, and we just wanna say thank you. If you're prepared to give today, I want to remind you that there are five ways you can give here at TSC. You can text Give TSC NYC to 77977. You can download the PushPay app and give that way. You can give online at tsc.nyc forward slash give. And the easiest way to give is by setting up a recurring gift on our website like we're showing you right now. We've made it simple to give automatically from your credit card, debit card, or checking account. Life gets busy. And this is a great way to make sure you're putting God first in your finances. It takes less than two minutes to set up a recurring gift, and we've made it convenient for you to give online through our secure platform. Or you can always mail your check or money order to our office. And if you're with us in person today, you can give by putting your tithes and offerings in the basket that our ushers will be passing out in a few moments. Thanks again for being such a generous church. Hey everyone, my name is Josiah DeRose. I'm the director of student life here at Summit. And I just wanna let you know that Summit is accepting applications for the fall semester of this year. Our program options include our traditional two-year track, the most popular, an eight-month high school gap year program, and an eight-month sabbatical experience. And I've got some great news starting today, May 17th, until the end of this month, Summit will be waiving the application fee. If you know someone interested in Summit, now is a great time to apply. To take advantage of this offer, text the word SUMMIT to 51000. We look forward to answering any questions that you may have and helping you get started with your application today. Let's go ahead and stand as we worship the Lord. He's so good to us, isn't he? Amen. He's so good. Give him a clap of praise, a shout of praise. He's worthy of our praise.
All right, thanks. You may be seated. It took me a little while to find the button there tonight. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, worship team. Great to see you guys. You're from Alabama. Awesome. Great to see you all here with us tonight. God bless. Praise God. For those that are considering um, Bible school, this would be a great school for you to consider attending because you do learn who you are in Christ, and you can come here to Summit as you are. In other words, you don't have to fake it. You don't have to be a spiritual firebrand. You just have to be vertical and breathing and willing to have a living encounter with God, okay? We'll take you at right as you are, just the way. You notice in the Bible, the people who pretended to be what they're not never got the miracle. It's the leper, it's the blind guy, it's the, it's the person that just knew what they were that got the miracle. And that's one of the things that we espouse here at this Bible school. You just be who you are, be honest, be real, be natural, and watch God meet you. We, I have personally seen some incredible miracles here. Lives absolutely transformed in their thinking and people transformed in, in the, the very essence of their being was changed by the presence of God. I, had, uh, I've, I remember one young man that came to this school and I said, so what brought you here? He says, I have no idea. I don't want to be here. I don't know how I got here. I don't know why I applied to come here. He was just a negative, 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 negative. And I said, Wow. I said, I really like you. You're honest. Uh, you know, I, it's hard to deal with people that are not honest, but you're honest. Well, I was here the day that God got a hold of him. I was here the day that he cried for 45 minutes or so at this altar, the day that God called him, and he's still preaching like a house on fire today. The Lord gave him a beautiful, beautiful wife that loves the Lord as much as he does, and the two of them are in ministry together, and I have just seen that over and over again. Well, not the wife part over it, but the, the getting <laughs> touched by God. Uh, some, some people are fortunate that way. Others have to wait just a little bit longer after they get out of school. And, but the Lord always meets their need. There are people on their phones tonight. If you want to just text in Summit to 51,000, there are people on their phones that are actually right here with us in the sanctuary that will answer your call and talk to you about the school if you're interested in that. We're going to have communion tonight at the end of this short sharing of God's Word so that if, uh, if you can get some juice and some crackers at home, and uh, be ready to partake of the celebration of what Christ did on the cross for you so that you could be forgiven and have a new life. My message tonight is from Luke chapter 4, if you have your Bible with you. If not, I'll just read it to you. Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 16. And the title is, If You Want It, If You Want It, A Miracle Will Come Your Way. If You Want It. Now, Father, I just thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, God, that we don't have, I don't have to make anything happen tonight. I'm simply here to declare who you are. I'm going to declare what you do. I'm going to declare your words as you have spoken them, and the rest is up to you. Lord, if I, I, could, if I could convince somebody of truth, that's a good thing, but it can't transform their lives. It has to be you that does the transformation. And thank you, Lord, that you're willing to go into any dark and place, any darkened mind, any darkened room, any bondage, any prison, wherever people find themselves in, that's where you are willing to go if they want it. So Father, tonight I pray for an open heart in those that are listening from around the world and those that are listening here in the sanctuary. God, open our hearts to simple truth. We don't need to know profound truth. We just simply need to know what is your heart. What did you come to do? How does it apply to my life? Can it change me tonight? Can I be a new person as you promise that those who turn to you do become? Can that be my portion? Can I have a miracle tonight? God Almighty, I ask that you be God Almighty. I ask you, Lord, tonight that you do miracles. I'm asking you, God, that you transform situations, deliver those that are oppressed, heal the wounded in heart, give sight to those who can't see a way forward. Let the treasure of heaven be open to those who, who know they have no resource to get out of where they are. Oh God, oh God, oh God, I pray as you once said to the church of Laodicea, behold, I stand at the door and knock and if you will open it, I will come in and sit down with you and fellowship with you. God, let that be tonight. I pray for somebody online tonight that's in a very, very dark place, a dark apartment, a dark room. God, would you help them to open the door to you tonight? that you may come in and you're willing to sit down in that place and you're willing to bring 
hope and help and clarity and freedom and forgiveness, God, everything that was purchased for, for him on the cross. Oh God, oh God, oh God, let this be a night of miracles. Let this be a season of transformation. Let it be a time, Lord, when you visit people one more time in a powerful way, far beyond just, just the, the presentation of information about you, but an actual visitation by the living God. Father, thank you for what you're about to do tonight. Thank you, Lord, for you are our only hope now. There is no other hope now. And God, I thank you that in the scriptures you tell us that you choose the weak and the nobodies and the nothings and the foolish and the offscouring and the despised of this world. You choose us, Lord, to do a work in that will bring your own name to glory. Thank you, God, for the simplicity of who you are and who you've revealed yourself to be to each heart in Jesus' name. If you want it, a miracle will come your way. Luke chapter four, beginning at verse 16. And so he, that's Jesus, came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Can you imagine being there? You imagine be, if this was a synagogue and this, this ordinary looking guy gets up and opens the scroll of the book of Isaiah and begins to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because, that means for this reason, that's what the because means. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Today. Now, the inference in verse 18 where he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me is that the poverty is so deep, there's no resource left in a person's life to get out of where they are. Sometimes the depression can be so captivating. The lack of physical strength, the lack of inner thought, the lack of ability to get up and get out of where they are is there's no resource. There's no, there's no chance to get out of where, the, where you are. But he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because I've come to bring a message to you that you can get out. There is a resource available to you to escape the poverty of your present condition. You sent me to heal the brokenhearted, implying that the wounds in some people's heart are so deep there is no escaping them. No counselor can do it. No amount of, of trying to pull up your own bootstraps can make a difference. No amount of reading self-help books can do it. And many people tonight who are listening to my voice or today, you know exactly what that feels like. You know that there's no human counseling available to you that can get you out of the place of wounding that is in your heart. Words that were spoken over your life. Something was done to you that so bruised you that it has affected your entire being. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and I've been sent to heal you to proclaim liberty to the captives. When your captivation is so deep, the bars are so thick, the gates are so strong, there's, there's no way out. You can't get out of the captivation, whether it's a captivation in your mind, if it's in your body, if it's in your thought process, whatever it is, you, you know you can't get out in your own strength. I've came to give the recovering of sight to the blind, people who just simply can't see a way forward anymore. They don't know how you're ever going to get out of where you are. And if you, if, even if you could stand up, you don't know where the door is. You don't know how to go forward. I, I don't, I've been there, so I kind of get this. When, you, when you're, you're so loathe what you're becoming, you don't see a way forward. You don't see your way out. You try to get out, but every time you try to find the door, you can't get out. And to set at liberty those who are oppressed, the, the oppression in a sense being so strong, the thoughts, the bombarding of your mind, this, this never-ending grinding of the teeth of the devil, may I put it that way, over your life, and the oppression is so strong, and the, the words coming to you. We, we just came back from 
uh, Italy where we were ministering to leaders and pastors who are on the front lines of addiction all across Europe. And, and some of the pastors and leaders have, have had to fight. And finally, they, they got free at the conference, thank God, but they had to fight thoughts that life is not worth living. Your, knife, your life is not worth going on. These, these grinding, here they are serving the addicted and serving those who are in the, the, some of the difficult places of life, and yet they themselves are being bombarded by hell, trying to tell them your life is not worth living. Throw yourself in front of a train. Drive your car at 100 kilometers an hour, in their case, into a wall. End it all right now. That the, the inference is that the oppression is, is so strong that only the supernatural power of God can touch it. That's the miracle I want to talk to you about tonight. The mir- it, it takes God's power. There's nothing in human reasoning, strength, counseling that can get you out of where you are. You can't change. You, you can maybe pacify yourself for a little while, but you, you, there's no power to change. That's the miracle I want to talk about. You know, when, when people talk about miracles, some people say, well, that's water turning to wine and all the rest of that, which is great. Thank God for all of those things. But I want to talk about the miracle of, of change, the miracle of freedom, the miracle of vision, the miracle of purpose in life, a miracle that only God can give. And Jesus said he closed the book and he gave it to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all them in the synagogue were fixed on him. He began to say, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, the promise of God that is made through the scriptures, that there's going to be, there's somebody going to arise that has this anointing to bring you into this kind of freedom is today fulfilled in your hearing. Can you imagine being in that meeting? Well, in a sense you are because the voice of God through the Holy Spirit and through his word is still speaking today. The word is just as valid today as it was when he spoke it. Today, listen to me, somebody online, I know there's somebody there tonight sitting in a very, you're in a dark room, there's almost no lights on there, and you're listening to this this message tonight, and I want to tell you, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. You can be free tonight. There is a miracle coming your way if you will receive it, if you desire it. You know, the irony of it all is sometimes people get so comfortable in their pain, it actually becomes a blanket for them. And they don't want to throw it away. They want to embrace it because it's at least something to talk about. And it gives me a, 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 sense, a, a sense of identity. It's not God's identity for my life, but at least it gives me a sense of identity. And, and pain has been such a, a, a blanket around you for so long, it's, it's almost inconceivable of casting it away and adopting something else in your life. But I'm telling you tonight, if you want it, a miracle is coming your way. In the book of Acts chapter 12, beginning at verse 5, Peter was in prison. He's one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. It says in verse 5 of Acts chapter 12, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And so you need to know tonight, those that are in these places of imprisonment in your mind or your body, whatever it is, we are praying for you. We are constantly praying for you. We're standing up and believing God that he's going to set you free. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did, and he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down the street, and immediately the angel departed from him. From this story, we learn that God will open doors to get you out of where you are and into where you should be. Peter is sleeping between two chains, with two chains between two soldiers, there's guards before the prison door. Remember Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to open the prison, the doors to those that are bound, the prison doors. It doesn't get much worse than this. It's, it's a physical type of, of the bondage that many people in our time are now finding themselves in. And suddenly a messenger of God is standing by him. Suddenly 
I'm in your living room tonight or whatever kind of room you're sitting and suddenly there's a messenger from God standing there beside the place where he's laying in his prison and in his bondage and telling him, get up quickly. And as soon as Peter got up, the scripture says his chains fell off his hands. That's the first thing you have to do. You see, the message comes to you tonight because God wants to give you a miracle. And you say to me tonight, well, what do I have to do? Get up. Just get up and start following where the voice of God is going to lead you. And as he got up and began to follow, the doors began to open. First of all, the prison door opened and let him out. And secondly, the city gate opened and let him in. That's what God does. When you begin to follow God, he takes you out of where, you, where you're not supposed to be and takes you in where you're supposed to be. And all these gates opened of their own accord. There is not a prison gate that can hold you back when Christ is leading you into the miracle that he has for your life. In Matthew chapter 14, we see another instance of the same thing of, of the apostle Peter. He was in a boat. He was in a storm, like many are in a storm tonight. And the boat was in the middle of the sea. So it's Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 24. The boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by waves, for the wind was contrary. And a lot of people know what that feels like. You're in a storm. The waves and the winds are against you. You're afraid that you're going to sink. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled and saying, it's a ghost, and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. When you get up and you begin to listen to him, you begin to let those prison doors open. You begin to walk out of where you're not supposed to be and into where God has for you. Then all of a sudden, you will find yourself empowered to walk where you never could before. Peter could not walk on water up to this point in his life. And in the, it was, you know, it's interesting that Jesus didn't wait till the storm was over. A lot of times that's what we think. Okay, God, when the storm's over, we'll talk. He says, no, we'll talk in the storm. And we won't talk in the morning, we'll talk in the fourth watch of the night. In the darkest moment, in the, in the most violent time, when the waves are overflowing your boat, I'm going to come to you, and I'm going to call you at that time to walk where you never have before. Can you imagine? That's the way God does things. Call you out of the boat in the worst moment of your life. When you listen and you step out, you begin to walk in places that you never could walk before. So your part is to get up, remember, from the prison and in the boat, get out. So get up and get out. Get out of where you are and start moving to where the voice of God is calling you. And lastly, in the book of Acts chapter two, I'm gonna close with this. Acts chapter two, verse 14. Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. This God will give you new power, new perspective, and new purpose for your life. From being in prison, to being in a boat, to now standing before five, at least 5,000 people with an anointing of God now coming upon him, giving him words now, not only ability to walk where he couldn't before, but to speak what he didn't have the power to speak before. If anyone is in Christ, he or she becomes a new creation. The old things in our lives pass away and thank God, all things become new. So get up, get out, and get in to where you're supposed to be. That's your part, God's part, is to open your prison door. God's part is to hold you up on the water. God's part is to give you a voice that you never had before, give you a message, give you a reason, give you a purpose in life. And Jesus closed the book in Luke chapter four, and the eyes of all of them were fastened upon him. And he said to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Today, if you want it, it can be yours. I have spoken to you 
about Jesus Christ tonight. I've spoken to you about what he's able to do. I've shared with you his desire. Remember, when he got up in the temple, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for this reason. He didn't go just to prove a point on a cross. He didn't feel like he had some judicial obligation to die for you. He came to get you because he loves you. He came to get you because he wants you back. He came to get you because he himself said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Not just eternal life, but a reason to live while you're here. A new song to sing, new words to speak, a new path to walk. I know what I'm talking about. This has been my life. It's been an amazing life. Sometimes I feel like I've, I've been in a dream. It's hard to describe it. You know the psalm that says, when the Lord turned our captivity, we were like them in the dream. In other words, we're saying, how did this happen to us? How did we go from all these years of being in bondage and then suddenly a decree is issued and we can all go home and we can rebuild? Well, that's who God is. That's what God does. That's the amazing thing about God. Why do we make it so complicated? We, we bring everybody into church and we talk about Hebrew and Greek meanings of words when all Jesus wants to do is set us free, save us from our sins and give us a new life. You know, the older I get, the simpler it's becoming. I want you to know tonight out there that God loves you. I want you to know that he's knocking on your door and a miracle is coming your way if you want it. If you want to get up from where you are, if you want to get out from where you are, if you want to get into what God has for your life, you won't regret it. And you will say when you get to the other side of your storm and your prison and everywhere you've been or are, only God could have done this. See, that's the miracle. That's going to be your story. That's going to be what you'll do for the rest of your lives. Like Peter, you'll stand up and say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. There's no other reason why Peter would stand before a bloodthirsty crowd on that particular day other than the Spirit of God was upon him, empowering him to do what he could not do in his own strength. That's the gospel in a nutshell. When we realize that we can't save ourselves that only by receiving the Son of God can we be forgiven for our sins. And we realize that the Son of God came not just to forgive us, but to give us a reason to live. Even in difficult days like we're now living in, He gives us a reason. He gives us a new song. He gives us a new heart. The Bible says He gives us a new mind and a new spirit. The old things are passed away. The old prisons, the old bondages, the old ways of doing things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. And we, our message is real simple. What God did for me, he can do for you. There was no formula involved in this and I, 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 there's no seven steps to anything. He just tapped me on the side and said, hey, put on your clothes, put on your shoes, follow me. The doors began to open. I began to walk out of bondage and into freedom and then in the middle of my storm, he says, hey, come walk where you've never walked before. Let me show you what I can do. Let me show you what my presence in your life is going to produce. And I began to walk in places I'd never walked, doing things I could never do, speaking things I was incapable of speaking in my own strength. That's been my life. It's been my testimony. And it's my joy tonight to be the angel standing beside your couch, tapping you on the leg saying, hey, get up. Get up, get dressed, put on your shoes. Come on, let's go, let's go. We're gonna get you out of here and then some doors are gonna start opening for you to go where you need to go. And even in the midst of everything that opposes you, I'm gonna call you to walk in places you've never walked before. And I'm gonna take you away, I'm gonna take out of your heart your fears and I'm gonna bring you out of, into the open and I'm, you're gonna speak words you never even knew you could speak in a way that you never had the power to speak them. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And if you want it, it can be yours. So I'm gonna lead you in a prayer tonight and I'm gonna ask that everybody who's here tonight could pray out loud with me and for the sake of those that are online with us this evening, that you would open your heart and receive Jesus Christ as your savior. And after you pray this prayer, start at the beginning. Tomorrow morning, get dressed, put on your shoes, and go outside. 
and follow where he leads you. Lord Jesus, pray these words. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for loving me. Thank you for coming to get me. In my pain, in my poverty, my blindness, and my prison. And you came for me because you love me. And your instructions are simple. You don't ask me to do much, just to believe and to get up and start walking. And you do all the rest. So tonight I open my heart. Jesus Christ, I invite you into my life to be my Lord, my Savior, and my God. Lead me, and I will follow you all through this life. And when it's all over, heaven will be my home because you have chosen to forgive me. I now belong to you, Jesus, and you belong to me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer tonight, I'm going to ask you to text the words decided to 51,000. Decided. 51,000. A video will come your way and somebody from Times Square Church will explain to you what, what do you do now? Where do I go from here? It's really simple. We don't bother you. It's just for your information, for your help. We're going to have one song then I'm going to come back and we're going to have communion together and we're going to celebrate your victory tonight. Thank God for you. Thank God for his word. Amen.
for I received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hallelujah. Father, thank you tonight for the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Thank you, God, for the people tonight that have turned to you for their salvation, for their forgiveness, God, for their, the new life that you promise. Uh, we do pray tonight that, God, you would seal the work that's been done in every heart, not let it be taken away. Not let anybody wake up in the morning saying, well, that, that was nice, but that wasn't for me. Let that not be the case. We pray that these lives would be transformed and forever walk with you. And Father, we thank you for it and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. We always encourage you at the end of every service, that prayer service on Wednesday night, to stay and pray. That means wherever you are, just stay and pray for a little while. If you're in a, a small group meeting in a home, for example, just pray and say, God, give us your Holy Spirit. God, give us the strength that we need to be the people we're called to be. Make us a living testimony in this generation of, of who you are and what you can do. People don't need an argument about you, Lord, anymore. They need a living de demonstration of who you are through your people. So let that be our portion. Father, we thank you for it. We're going to sing one more song, then Pastor Pavel will come back and close us tonight. Till then, God bless you.
we thank God together with you, wherever you are, we thank God that God is on our side and He saved us. Amen. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you that your spirit found us. Once we were so far away, but you have found us. We did not seek you, you sought us. God, we thank you that you saved us. And so many tonight, as well as we've heard the word of God being preached. God, we thank you that you're still calling sinners to yourself. You're still saving, you're still doing miracles. And we thank you for it. We love you for tonight and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, also at 1 o'clock with Pastor Tim Delina from New York City. And also we're looking forward to see you next week on Wednesday night here at 7 o'clock. May God bless you.